Hey, uh, the Berkeley County uh, School Board, the Board of Education, by the way, I spoke in front of them earlier, uh, but uh, just want you folks to know, I wasn't throwing you under the bus. This is just a joke. I love the the current board. I'm a huge. I am, in, in all sincerity, mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan of the current board because they are accessible to the media. In ninety something percent of the occasions I reach out, uh, I'm able to get somebody from this board, and I can't say that about any of the previous boards uh, that I was uh, able to try to get interviews with previously. So, uh, big fan of this this board. So. Just want you to know that you have my love, my loyalty, <laughs> and I was just joking because I Jackie Jackie went Rob threw us under the bus with an explanation. For like, no, I just, just I think she was joking she about was, that. She too. was yeah, too, but I was, just wanted to make sure. No more candy for you, <laughs> which is probably a good thing. <laughs> probably a good thing. Let's welcome in our guest uh, from the Berkeley County. Can we call you Commission yet? July first. July one. First. Yeah. Steve Catlin. <laughs> How you doing? I'll be so Good happy be when here. I can do that, man. Good to be with such a distinguished crew this morning. You got you got some important people here, man. Best selling author, Hall of Famers, and, and then Rob, me. You're <laughs> just Rob. Best play by play guy, no offense to Matt Miller no. that I've ever seen. So <laughs> Matt's number two. <laughs> You know what? We'll have to fight it out here yeah. at the end, just before the you show's over. The pay per view. You both were excellent. Uh, yeah. I was partial to Rob because it was during my son's heydays. So. Mm. Yeah, because we did a lot of Hedgesville. You games. did. You did. Yeah. But it was fun. Brady and that group came up with sophomores. They were yeah. fun to watch, man. It was mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. They were. Was It was uh, Shane Motes, yeah. your son, Derek Brown, and Kenny Roberts. Kenny Roberts. Kenny Roberts and then yeah. uh, was it was it like Byron Reed, the guy that always got the start, well, that did the dirty uh, work? He was a uh, senior when they were sophomores. Sophomores. Or, okay. And juniors. But um, yeah. Yeah. They, they had a, they, the biggest comeback I've ever seen in a high school basketball game. James Wood. 34 <laughs> points down with about 10 minutes, 15 seconds to go in the game. No, that's not right. There was there was six fifteen left in the third quarter, so fourteen minutes fifteen seconds yeah. to go in the game. They were down thirty four. They got it down to nineteen after three, and then made up the nineteen points in the fourth quarter. I don't think I'll ever see that that's again. Crazy, yeah, <clears throat> that was amazing. Now, let's talk county business here, Steve. And uh, first and foremost, I want to talk uh, home rule. That's not been discussed in this past legislative session. That seems like it's something that isn't. Uh, going to be discussed by this Republican-dominated legislature for counties. And that means your 1% sales tax I know you'd like to get is sure. uh, also something that won't be discussed anytime soon. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't say that. Uh, you, you would, it. but I did. We discuss it all the time, <laughs> and um, it's something that we surely need. Um, and I, I, I sent an uh, email out to all the local legislators here after their session, and I thanked them for their hard work. They're very, very dedicated people, they, and uh it's an intense several months for those folks down there, and I appreciate the sacrifice they make, and they work really hard. And they, they came through with some key uh, bills for us: the uh, acceleration of the uh, of the property transfer tax. Uh, it was going to take 10 years to get it all. Now it's only going to be five years, so that was very important. Uh, it's worth several million a year, and John Hardy was the key guy behind that. Uh, also, of course, the jail jail uh, fee, uh, you know, the jail that's bill huge was huge. And our, our lobbyists, uh, Summer and Dan Hall, did a really nice job down there this year. And, of course, Craig came through recently with, uh, you know, with the t- another $25 million for our water, water district. Um, we are going to approve the uh, water rates and increase uh, Thursday, probably, to, uh, this, this week. Um, it's, it's needed very much. Uh, and I, I want to commend the uh, water district, the board, uh, for the, and their staff. They really research this thing thoroughly. They've got a good plan. It's going to be implemented over five years, so it's not a, a big burden on our on our users. And with the fifty plus million from the state, uh, we're going to invest over one hundred and forty million dollars in our water system uh, here in Berkeley County over the next five years. The the plant down in uh, Live Fever Springs in South Berkeley is sixty some years old, and it needs replaced desperately. And even though you don't like increases, uh, you would probably like less not having any water at all. So, uh, What's it? There. there. And what will this mean to the average water bill? Well, what it would mean is over the five-year period right now for 3,400 gallons, you're paying about $32. And in five years, you're going to be paying about 51 The other thing in Berkeley County in the water district here, we have different rates. So there's a commercial rate 
for, for non-residential, and it's less. Uh, you know, you take someone like P&G, they use a million gallons a day of the six million that we are, are, are we're putting out six million gallons of water a day, and, and P&G is using one million of it. So uh, they're going to balance that a little bit more so that the increase on the in, on non-residential side is going to go up a higher percentage than the residential side, try to balance it more. A lot of places you pay the same rate regardless whether it's non-residential or, mm -hmm. or residential. So does, but they've done a nice job. Does P&G repurpose and, any of that million gallons a day, Steve? Do they what? Re repurpose any of that? Are they able to reuse, uh, re filter I, I, their own I, or whatever? I don't think so, no. No, and uh, so you know, there's a lot. Uh, back to the one percent sales tax, Rob. I, I I'm thoroughly convinced, and I've been meeting with legislators at lunch and different times, one on one, one on two. Uh, we we could actually save the f taxpayers money in the future by if they would implement the one percent sales tax. And how do you come up with that? Well, the the fact is is that we're going to have to raise rates. Our, our our two biggest needs is county government. This first of all, the school system has the most pressure on them because of the growth here, no question about it. For us, it's roads and it's also, um, you know, public safety employees. We need paid firefighters, we need more deputies, uh, resource officers and things of this nature. So we're actually discussing maybe trying to pass an excess levy to help pay for that, um, those positions. I, How much I would you I need? I don't like that, Rob, because first of all, uh, if you go in excess levy, if it's not a school excess levy, we have to have 60% of the vote. And then if you put it all in salaries and you would pass it, but then five years down the road when it's up for renewal and it doesn't pass, mm -hmm. what do you do with all those employees? And so my answer is if you give us a 1% sales tax, that would give us the resources and the funding to hire these positions. And it would take the burden off. When we pass a levy or something or an increase in fees, it only affects Berkeley County citizens only. With the 1% sales tax, 40% of it is projected would be paid by out-of-town, whether they're out-of-county or out-of-state visitors coming through here. And you put somebody on a fixed income of, say, 50000 a year, right? Okay, so if we pass an excess levy for $200 a year more on your taxes, or we wouldn't have to do that because we have the sales tax now, they would have to spend $20,000 in Berkeley County to pay back that $200 under one penny. So it would actually save people on a fixed income revenue. We might even be able to eliminate a few fees, you know, because of this. And if so, every fee we eliminate for every $100, they would have to pay $10,000. Now, someone on a fixed income is pay, pay, buying food where there's no tax. They're paying their utilities, and they're just making ends meet. They don't have ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to spend on merchandise and things. So it makes a lot of sense to me. And they have to, they have, they, we need to have impact fees in Berkeley County, whether we have zoning or not. And that's another battle we're fighting. So we're trying to do that. Uh, the, the growth in my mind is where the, the developers are not contributing enough back to support the growth in this community, the infrastructure, and we've got to find ways to, and sources of revenue to do this. So uh, one of the other yeah. things that we're going after, it's going to be on the agenda this week, and this is one of my pet peeves, but since I've been on the council, we're going after the people without a state tax. Finally. Yeah, finally. <laughs> and we've talked about it for too long. Uh, we've had three meetings. I've had three meetings with the sheriff, doc, Doc Trenary out of the assessor's office, and our legal counsel, Anthony Delegati. Uh, and it's going to be on the agenda this week. We've already started the process. It's working, but we need more help. So we're probably going to hire you the contracted service. Uh, we're going to hire maybe a part-time personnel to follow through on this. Uh, we're talking thousands of cars, and we're talking probably several million dollars. Right now in Berkeley County, the vehicle tax through personal property generates about just under $8 million a year. We're estimating it would bring in at least $10 million and maybe more if we have people. And, and at this point, with the state legislature's decisions to they're going to rebate the money now, so why not pay your tax because you're going to be able to get it back mm -hmm. with the state rebate. Um, and so it makes all sense Will this be world. in effect by the start of the new school year because that's where we get we, the most complaints? We hope so, you know, and we hope so. We're going to move on. It very, we're already in the process of doing it, but we've we got to get enough personnel. Gary Wine's working on some software to help simplify this process and start collecting this tax. Who's going to benefit the most? The school system is. They get 78% of the tax, mm -hmm. okay? But it's going to help us, too. We'll take in more than enough money to pay this new position if we hire someone. Uh, but what I'm saying, we have to go after this and collect this money. I don't think it's fair sitting as a county council to raise fees on our constituents when we got people in our community that aren't paying their fair share. 
right or wrong. And and I, I can't let's I can't get some live questions for you here, right. Steve John. <clears throat> Having recently gone through this process of mm -hmm. I have West Virginia tags mm -hmm. a year ago. Thank you. It it's easier to get global entry through the uh, TSA than it is to change tags. Mm -hmm. It's it's an enormous bureaucracy mm -hmm. to the point that I've been married for 39 years. I had to bring a marriage certificate because, the well, the electric bill I had to show was in my wife's name. It's not in my name. Mm -hmm. And I had to bring a, wedding, a marriage certificate to verify that, that this is, this happens. It's, it's a brutal process. Right. Just, you know, I'm just right. saying. I also want to, <clears throat> excuse me, What's the dollar value? If we had a 1% sales tax, mm -hmm. wave a magic wand, we got it. How much money is that like today? Kerry Wine did a study on it, and he's estimating at least a minimum of $12 million a year. So, That's real money. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's real money. City of Martinsburg's had it for five years, uh, or maybe longer now, and that's like over $5 million a year just in the city. And we're only talking, you know, the city's got 18,000 people. We've got 135,000 residents in Berkeley County now. It's serious money. It's enough money for us to hire paid firefighters. You know, we have 22 paid firefighters in place now. All the volunteer stations are asking for 24-7 coverage, and we need that desperately. So we've got to find resources and funding to, to hire more paid firefighters. And, you know, we've lost four people since the beginning of the year in fires. And, and I'm not saying, but we've got to make our response time quicker, you know. Mm -hmm. In some places it's nine minutes, sometimes it's 13 before the truck gets out of the station. And we've got to improve that dramatically. As, as a former firefighter, we, we, we called that the cellar savers. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when, once, sure. when you get to a fire that's, when right. you can't leave for 10 minutes, you get to a fire that's 20 minutes old. Right. There's, mm -hmm. there's not a lot left. Um, we, we invest in it, new stations, too, would not yeah, be a bad idea. Yeah, and, but we have a fire fee in place now, okay? And it brings in about $2.5 million a year. But that's money used for buildings, for equipment, trucks, and things of that. It's not used for personnel at all. So uh, they're considering an increase in the fire fee. But we, as a council, would like to see it go towards paid firemen now. Uh, you know, the two and a half million a year, to me, most of the buildings, the only one left in the system uh, that needs a new building is Bennington right now. And then also, uh, of course, Back Creek Valley. But Back Creek Valley is not in bad shape, but Bennington needs replaced. But Hedgesville's got a new station, South Berkeley, Baker Heights. They all have new buildings. They have, you know, equipment. And we'd like to see it go towards paid firefighters because that's, that's where the need is right now. You know, the resource officers in schools, if we really want to secure our schools the way they are, to me, the best answer is to, to you know, to deter any kind of consideration is have resource officers in the schools. Well, it takes money. Well, this out-of-state tax could provide over a million a year for the school system that could be used for resource officers. And uh, so it's, it's things like this. I, I just hate to see the burden always come back on the homeowners and the community and the residents, you know. Uh, since we, I've been in office in four and a half months, uh, one example is the uh, ambulance fee. They approved it before I took office to be a $25 increase this year and 25 more next year. Well, we passed the thing where they've never charged non-residential locations for ambulance fees. And we have an ambulance going to like a Macy's once or twice a week, but they're paying no fee. So we've set up a fee structure now, that non-residential fee structure, that's going to bring in about 7% of the total budget, which is the need. The, the, our calls in the ambulance is about 8%, 7 to 8% of our calls. Well, we're going to bring in about 7% of that budget now through this non-residential fee. And by doing this, the people in homestead exemption, the $25 next year is going to be waived by them so they don't have to pay it. And, um, and, and these are the things we're trying to do to help our, our residents. And uh, Matt Miller. How? What's the challenge with the out of, of state tags? To being able to kind of track people down and know yeah. that that they're living here, as opposed to maybe that's a company yeah. vehicle from yeah, their company right. in another state. Well, we have to track that. You know, so they, the assessor's office goes out and assesses new homes, mm -hmm. and then they assess existing homes every three years. So I want to accelerate that. But so while they're there, they can write down if there's an out of state tags in the driveway, they write it down and then come back. Well, then it goes from there. The sheriff's office picks it up and they follow through on the tags to see who the actual owner is to see if it is a business vehicle or not. But then you have to have someone because once you serve notice, they have 30 days to change their tags. And if they don't, they can actually be held in contempt and go to magistrate court and pay, face a $500 fine. And if we would uh, go after those folks and we pay, if we have six or seven people pay a $500 fine, mm -hmm. the word's going to get around real quick. Yeah. And I think, uh, but it's an educational thing because now you can apply for a rebate to get this money back. 
We've got people living in places that have two and three vehicles, and they got two or three kids in our school system, and, and they're not paying their car tax, you know? And it's, 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 it's not fair, first of all, to the residents that are. And then we need the money desperately uh, to, you know, to handle the growth. And uh, so it's a big issue for me. It was a big issue when I campaigned last year with the community. I get I, I can't go anywhere. I go to the gas station. People say, Steve, when are you going to get these out of take tags? <laughs> Steve, I go to dinner, you know. When are you going to get that? Yeah, you hear it all the time. I've been and hearing it for years. For years and years. And we're going to do something about it, I'm going to tell you. And we're going after it, and we're going to try to get it done efficiently and get people to get it done. I know it's frustrating at the DMV, John, and I understand that, but still, it's something that we need to get people to do. And uh, I just think it's fair, you know. And uh, so, you know, we're working really hard. I, I'm really pleased with the, uh, the, the uh, five of us getting along and how we're discussing things and, and, and working together. Uh, we, you know, we've got a, we, we just passed, uh, we just passed a new ordinance for the stormwater. The stormwater permit's been, uh, been not in place for two years we finally got we, we, we agreed to be co-permittees with the stormwater district and we're, we're getting a new one we just passed a new ordinance there's going to be a new fee structure involved with the stormwater coming down the road probably um, you know the back creek valley should have never been put in the uh, west of the north mountain should have never been put in the stormwater district in the first place uh, they weren't in the growth area so we're looking at that but so we're, we're looking at a lot of issues and of course the roads is a big one of course that no one's happy with and that that's one i want to talk about too when when i got on the council i asked to be on the mpo it's the hagerstown eastern panhandle metropolitan planning organization mm -hmm. well there's eight of these mpos around the state of west virginia and you cannot spend federal dollars on any road project unless it goes through your mpo for your region and i go to my first meeting in january and with the infrastructure money coming from the federal government my first question was uh, what's going on with the Route 9 bypass, you know, Route 9 improvements, uh, no plans. I said, ooh, that's interesting. Well, what about the short road? Uh, they talked about a uh, bypass from short road to Fairfax, uh, Novak, laying down by the Tabor Station, the mm -hmm. airport. Uh, it got killed. Oh, really? Because it wouldn't take any traffic off exit 12. Really? And I, I'm just, I left there just disillusioned and amazed, you know. I said, I can't believe this. Well, this will be my third meeting tomorrow. I got an email last week from Matt Mullen, next to the executive director, and every two years, each MPO decides what their tier one project is, and then they decide for four or five tier two projects. Well, we're going to vote tomorrow. The tier one project's going to be improvements in from Route 9 West. About time. Praise the Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, we still got to get the Department of <laughs> DOT transportation to approve the money to do some of this stuff, but... When Eddie and I were in Charleston, Goganair, Councilman Goganair and I, we met with five people from the DOT. Commissioner Riston was in D.C., but we met with Greg Bailey. He was the next number two guy and four others. And we said, look, he said, we're sitting here begging you. We're the fastest growing county in the state, and we're not getting any help from you, and we need it. We've been trying to get them up here for since I've been in office now to visit Berkeley County so we can drive them around and show them the issues, and we can't get them here, you know. So we're working through uh, Senator Blair, we're working through our legislators. We've got to put pressure on the DOT to to help us here with this financial mm -hmm. thing for these roads. It's, it's you know, I, I, I've designed a bypass around Hedgesville, you know, to 901 because all the congestion there, I just came through there this morning, you know. Mm -hmm. It's because so people are trying to make a left on <laughs> 901. Well, 901 is a disaster right now with the curves and all that. Let's improve the curves on 901. Let's put a bypass around Hedgesville. And then once we get around Hedgesville, we can put another bypass from there on 901 into Martinsburg. Steve, before you go, i got to get this question in. Gary Wine answered it uh, two weeks ago when he was on the program. Uh, but it's asked again on our uh, comment section in regards to the 911 bid that was uh, substantially higher than other bids and the council are voting to approve that bid. Gary explained it was because all the upfront costs weren't included in many of the other bids. So what looked to be a million dollars more expensive actually wasn't when you factored in the long-term cost of the contract. Is that the way you understood it? Too? Exactly. It wasn't comparing apples to apples. And the system that we went with is just a much more efficient and much better system, for sure. And we're, we're, we decided to do what's best for the community and for 9-11. So. Gary explained it as this bid would actually cost less over the length of the contract than the other bids, even though it looked to be substantially right. higher. Right. It's, I agree 100%. Yep. And right. the council did unanimously. Yep. All right. Very good. Matt? Nothing left. John? 
I'm good. All right, final comment is yours, Steve Catlett. Well, uh, I appreciate the time today. Uh, I want you to know that we're working hard uh, in Berkeley County as a council uh, to make Berkeley County a better place to live. Our roads are a mess. Our schools are a mess. We're working with the school system. We've got dialogue going with them. We've got meetings set up with them constantly to work with the school system. I hope we can restore the relationship with the city so we can work together on some major projects as well. And uh, we just need help from our legislators. And I know I ask a lot of them. And the golden egg is the 1% sales tax. It may never happen in my lifetime, but I'm going to die trying to get it in, okay? And uh, that's all we can do is just beg them to help. So, Steve, good to see you again. Thanks for having Thank me you. today. Thank you kindly. Steve Catlett from the Berkeley County, uh, I guess we can call him commission. It's going to be that way in July soon.